Well, since I rewatched last week's live and talked about sound and seating and how that should play into room design and kind of background design if you're, you're virtual, we are not going to talk about either of those this week. My plan was to talk about seating last week and sound this week. So I'll link the sound uh, blog below. That was posted about two weeks ago, so you can learn more about how sound really impacts learning and um, the ability to attend in the stress response system. And then seating was linked last week's, but this week's topics we're going to talk about color. So how does color impact the stress response, impact learning, and what should we do regarding the color of you know, our classroom, if, if we're in a classroom, or you know, all of these room design elements and aspects all play into your working setting if you're working virtually, so the, the setting that you have around you. The visuals that you have on your screen when you are teaching and also the information share that you can share with families to help them create spaces that are most conducive for their kids for learning. So as I'm talking about sound and seating and color, consider it from many different lenses. So the lens of your own physical classroom, the lens of your working space at home, the lens of your background screen if you are virtual, and the lens of sharing the information from or with parents so they can help their kiddos create a optimal working area for their kids. So let's go to color. Basically with color, you just need to think about what are what are the common colors? So what colors are associated with calm? And those are the colors most often found in nature that we didn't have to really have our guard up, our defenses up in the history of human beings. So think about like colors, reds and oranges and kind of some more unnatural colors, maybe even like some purples, but definitely reds and oranges and those kind of warmer, brighter, uh, powerful colors because those colors back in the day really represented danger to us. So think about like snakes and um, even some poisonous like frogs and lizards and anything of a bright color that is associated uh, with poison. So naturally those bright colors were like danger, alert, get your stress response activated so that you can keep yourself safe. So today, our brains, fast forward, we may not be exposed to those things, but our brains were wired that way many years ago. So naturally, we get a little bit heightened internally when we are around lots of bright reds and oranges. So I would say, in your working space, maybe try to avoid some of those colors or softer versions of those colors, especially if you're on a screen, like reds and oranges, not so good. Um, maybe spurts of them, like if you want to heighten the energy really quickly, but if you want kids to stay focused and have their stress response at bay, not so many reds and oranges. So then what colors are we looking for? Well, think of the places where we might have been years ago where it was safe and our stress response wasn't activated or didn't have to be activated. So like water, water is very soothing, very common. Like if you're on the water, you can see for the most part what's in front of you and around you. Same if you're like in open lands, like farmland or fields or deserts um, and even grassland. So colors like greens and blues and even like some grays and some browns, like those colors are naturally very calming to us. So including more of those colors in your room, including them in your backgrounds, if you're, if you're on a virtual platform and you have a background up, or even if you are putting a physical background up, make sure they have those calming colors. You know, whites are really good too, because whites just, when you have white space, it just allows the mind to settle. So based on research, suggestions would be the walls in which kids are facing, and if they're not in a physical classroom, they're facing you on the computer screen. Good colors for, for active learning are like yellows. And then what you want to do is you want to shift the color to grays and blues for independent work because it allows settling time for the brain. So the big takeaway is use common colors and stick more with grays and blues and greens um, and maybe yellow for more active learning time and try to avoid those reds and oranges unless there's just a quick flash. Um, and that should keep stress response systems at bay and kids will be able to better focus and they're good for you too. Like if you're in a space that's, that's got more white, got more green, got more blues, your, your stress response is going to stay at bay. So make sure that you're designing a space for yourself that has those colors in mind and, and try and reduce the amount of bright colors so that you can stay focused and you can stay 
www.ebooksforbeginnersbook.com and do your best job teaching. So that's the big takeaway for today. I'm going to link both blogs below. I'm going to link last week's sound blog and I'm going to link this week's color blog. So if you want to know more information about color and learning and how all that impacts uh, the ability to learn and, and, and control emotions, regulate emotions, check out the blogs linked below. I will see you next week.